It is Wednesday the 10th of June and uh, I think it's about 6.45 in the morning and um, I shall be harvesting my garlic this morning. Um, as you can see there it is overdue. I was going to do it last weekend uh, but didn't get round to it. There's always, uh, there's always a list of jobs waiting. Right, so I shall be harvesting these. I've got elephant garlic and you can see that the leaves are yellowing on those. Um, I don't think that's rust, I think that's just uh, old age. And um, the other garlic, I've got two varieties which uh, I don't know what the varieties are. Um, and uh, they're looking as though they're ready for harvesting as well. So I'll get these harvested and I'll bring you back at the end of the video and show you the harvest. Um, you don't want to see me pulling these out. Um, I would imagine that these, I've left these a little bit too long so they will have split. Um, which isn't of too much detriment, but uh, they certainly don't look as nice and I'd rather they, that they look nice as um, whole bulbs of garlic. So I shall uh, harvest those, but I'll just give you a quick view of my um, beans. I've got uh, four varieties of beans, I think, uh, runner beans. These are balotti beans. Never grown these before, climbing balottis these are, because you can get dwarf ones as well. And I'm going to grow these this year mainly for... The, the dried seed inside uh, for dried beans uh, for winter use in stews and chilies and things like that or just on their own um, so that's something new that I'm trying this year uh, there is one thing about um, your beans get them on the canes as soon as you can um, I use these clips here um, because they spend half their energy trying to uh, stand up straight and uh, if you can get them onto the canes as soon as you can they're away in no time it makes such a difference if you see one side by side one that's struggling to cling on and one that's uh, already on the cane you'll notice a big difference six seven eight inches maybe a foot uh, in a week so it does make quite a big difference uh, but the stems are very tender so make sure that you don't uh, pinch them or squash them uh, so that's the Bellotti beans. They're, they're looking quite good. And then I've got my runner beans. Um, as a lot of you will know, I uh, cross my canes uh, about two foot up. And then the beans can go off either side. And it gives them a um, good air flow around them and uh, also for ease of picking because the beans should hang down nicely off there. I appreciate it, it takes up a little bit more room but uh, for me it's uh, a no-brainer and it works really well. Now these beans have uh, the ones on this side are Stenna and uh, they hit the cane straight away and we're up and away and they're about getting on for five foot some of those and this morning I've been um, if you see there you can see if it'll focus you can see the flower buds there just in here well this morning I've been taking them all off the bottom foot and a half um, the reason being all as they do is they grow and they, they dangle on the floor, they curl around and they're just slug magnets. 
and I think it's better to take them off now and let the energy go into the rest of the plant and then let the first the first flower buds form at around a foot and a half, about 18 inches. I find that uh, that was better for me because you always do get your beans and they're, they're full of holes and they're lying in the soil. So uh, I think that's a better way to do it. The other variety on here is Moonlight and uh, they were all planted at the same time but these are uh, quite a bit behind the stenner and they did take quite a while to uh, adhere to the, the canes even though I clipped them and uh, the wind we had last weekend did unravel quite a few of them uh, so I've had to re-ravel them around and wrap them around the canes and here that's the wind damage from last week you can see that the wind burns the leaves and uh, you can see a, the healthy leaves next to them but that's wind damage that is um, it doesn't even have to be cold uh, it's just the uh, it's just the way that the wind is with them so that's uh, stenner and moonlight and then over here i've just got six plants here these are i'm growing these for the longest runner bean see how long i can get one and I've done the same with these. I've taken all the flowers off. You can see here where they've where they've been, the stems of the flowers. And I've taken all those off, and I shan't let any um, any flowers start until about a meter high. And also on these, I'm taking all the side shoots off and keeping them to one stem. Just a bit of fun, just to see how I get on. Um, I don't know what the name of these is, they were just bought as uh, the longest bean. So uh, that's something else uh, that I haven't done before and I'll keep you up to date on, uh, on how they go. And sweet corn, this is looking uh, healthy, it's never looked back since I put it in. Um, this isn't an F1 variety, this is a heirloom and this is called Golden Bantam. And uh, the name suggests that it might be a small cob, but um, the picture in the brochure didn't uh, didn't look like it was a small one, and the plants certainly don't look like they're going to be small. They're uh, romping away. Uh, I have noticed that there is quite a few stems on some of them. You can see there, and some of them have got three or four on. Um, another one there, you can see. That's got four stems on it. Um, a few years ago, about three years ago, I did see on YouTube that somebody said take the side stems off and uh, let the energy go into the main plant. So I did do that, and uh, to be fair, it ruined the crop. Um, they never seem to recover from that. Um, so I've not done. I'm not doing that again. I shall leave all the side shoots on. And if you get an extra cob, then it's a bonus. Um, but it's certainly not the plants back, in my opinion. Uh, the reason I've gone to F1, uh, not an F1, is so as I can save the seed on the, um, on the sweet corn. I'm just growing the one variety, and hopefully, if it's a, a fairly decent crop, I shall keep uh, one of the biggest cobs and uh, I shall be growing that on and that will be my um, desired plant for the future. Um, I think they're about 199, 299, so about 30, 40 seeds. Um, I usually sow two packets, so it'll say four or five pound um, every year and uh, that all helps. And also that they are getting used to my soil and my con my weather conditions down here um, they evolve to the area that they grow in uh, whereas F1s they all grow the same and they all seem to harvest at the same uh, time of year as well and also the uh, the nursery men they love the F1s because you have to rebuy every year and you can't save the seed because they don't grow true so that's my reason for going over to F1 on the majority of my seeds 
um, for the future. So I'll go and harvest the garlic and um, I'll just give you a very quick video on the results of my garlic. Just before I show you the uh, garlic harvest, if you want to see how garlic should be grown, pop over to uh, My Allotment Life and Robert. He's just done his first garlic harvest. Um, he's got an allotment, I think this is his second year, and um, he started from scratch and he's done a lot of work on his allotment and um, he's doing a good job and uh, you won't get a better garlic harvest than what he's just had. So if you pop along to his channel, My Allotment Life, uh, tell him that Alan from the Dawn Chorus sent you and uh, give him your support and um, yeah, you'll see, certainly see a very good garlic harvest. So there we have the um, garlic harvest and as predicted, they, uh, they have split as you can see here and also the uh, the outer casing is uh, starting to uh, it, well it is rotting so probably a fortnight too late harvesting these um, I did think about doing it uh, thinking that they were ready a fortnight ago and I should have gone with my gut instinct um, I haven't gained any size or anything like that so um, yeah always follow uh, what your thoughts are um, and don't leave things too long but it's not a bad harvest um, there's plenty of garlic here to keep us going for 12 months um, that's the ordinary garlic there's two varieties here but I can't remember the names of them and every year they seem to get a bit smaller so I may be um, start afresh with some fresh garlic next year and I'll know the names of them and exactly what varieties they are and um, the characteristics about them but these aren't too bad they're uh, you can see that one there is splitting as well but there's some good bulbs in there as big as me thumb nearly and I've got big fingers uh, so that's uh, a welcome harvest and uh, this bit of land now I shall get some uh, peas in uh, Kelvin Wonder I think will probably be what I'll get in there I'll get a couple of those in there and I'll probably also harvest my overwintering onions as you can see they're going over now I uh, don't know the names of these either I had a white variety a red and a yellow the yellow ones not a single one has bolted so I'll have to look up the name of that variety for overwintering and I'll probably just go for the one variety uh, but I didn't know when I planted these that they only last about four four weeks after harvesting uh, they do not store at all um, when I read that they don't store for too long I didn't expect it to be that short a time so these will get used up um, but I'll probably harvest these and then I can get uh, a few more peas in um, but there's the uh, garlic harvest and uh, I hope you're all keeping well um, I think we are due some rain uh, we could certainly do with it um, I'm down to my last half water butt now and um, the potatoes are getting watered with the uh, tap water which uh, I don't like to do but you have to do what you have to do Take care everybody, many thanks for watching, hope you're all keeping safe and well, kind regards, bye bye.